Dr. Jaffe, some practitioners have had success helping their patients with a blood type diet adjustment. For example, uh, it is said that type A um, blood types tend to have a weaker production of stomach acid and thus have a better health results when they reduce or eliminate red meats. Could you speak on the blood type diet? How might blood type influence an individual's digestive composition? Well, I am somewhat familiar with the blood type diet because I know Peter Diadamo and I knew his dad, Jim, when I taught the Oriental Medical Strategies in Western Medical Practices course in the early 80s. Um, I was regularly in touch with the dad, Jim. Uh, Peter D. Damo's a professor, I think now maybe even Professor Emeritus, but has long been a professor at uh, Bridgeport, uh, one of the leading researchers in naturopathic medicine, and a really lovely human being. Now, he has published a number of books on the premise that initially it was just your blood type. A, B, O, and you guided people based on that. Now he's expanded it to include all of the subtypes, Lewis, others. These are things that blood bankers know about, but you can measure much more than just your A, B, O type. Um, I know of practitioners who make that the core of their digestive, the aspects of their practice uh, on digestion. Uh, I think the enthusiasm uh, of the practitioner is important, both in terms of the results that the individual gets and in terms of the impression that the practitioner has of that approach. Um, it's quite a separate matter, but if your blood type really predicted what to do about inflammation and repair deficit, what to do about autoimmunity and self-attack, then the need for lymphocyte response assays would not exist because LRA testing is premised on the fact that people have different digestions based on what they eat and drink, what they think and do, and the digestive remnants in the people that have maldigestion, dysbiosis, enteropathy, et cetera, which is most Americans, um, is not predictable just knowing the blood type. Now, if a blood type practitioner, for example, takes people off hard to digest foods like grains and meat and cow dairy, they might well be doing good. But in our experience, that's not enough because you need to know the other uh, reactive substances um, in order to restore tolerance in the immune defense and repair system. So I think when you start from the premise that my practice is built around the Diadamo blood type approach, and I'm getting superior results. That's the end of the discussion. If you don't see a need for individualized testing of immune responses, if you think that the blood type alone tells you what you need to know to practice your best, then go forth and prosper. I can tell you that in the early 80s, at the beginning of the lab, I had practitioners who started with the blood type diet and ended up enthusiastically using the LRA by ELISA Act. Um, on the other hand, I have colleagues that I admire uh, that largely uh, base a, a, a significant fraction of their practice around understanding the blood type diet and having people practice whatever that predicts. So I don't, I don't see it as harmful. I do see it as categorical. It says your genes are more important than your experience. And that is the opposite of what the data shows. The data 
if you put it all together and you get the synthesis and consensus of the NIH experts, it's 92% epigenetic lifestyle, it's 8% transgenerational, which includes your DNA and your RNA and so forth. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm uh, uh, happy to be appreciative of the Diadamo work and happy to be a generation beyond it in terms of personalized and truly predictive uh, personalized programs um, to, to restore neurohormonal balance and digestive competence and metabolic detoxification and all the things that we build in uh, to our program uh, that frankly are um, largely overlooked if you, if, you, if you base your practice around that blood type uh, hypothesis. 